Hello summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be discussing counterpicks to some of the more popular OP champions on patch 11.16. We'll be going over the runes, builds, and playstyles to effectively counter specific matchups. So the next time you run into one of these characters, you'll have the game knowledge and the confidence to bully your opponents. Though, I don't really condone cyberbullying. We'll be starting things off in the top lane with Heimerdinger as a counter to Camille. To know how to be an OP champion, it's important to first realize why they're OP. Camille's lane strength comes from her flexibility in trading. Against weak opponents, she can just walk up and use her Q to trade or commit to fights fully with her E. Against slightly stronger opponents, she may trade with Q but hold E to zip away. And against the strongest laners, she can just hang back, poking with W to soften up her opponent while healing herself and then take a fight once she's gotten a big enough HP lead. But all three of those styles completely flop against Heimerdinger. The first two options involve moving into melee range, which means being in the middle of all your turrets. If she does that, just drop a grenade on her and she'll take a ton of damage from your turret lasers while you just walk away free of harm. Sitting back and spamming W doesn't work too well either. You'll just shove in the wave and poke her way harder with your own W than she does with hers. Just make sure that you aren't spamming your E aggressively, that gives her a window to jump in on you. Camille usually outscales opponents since she can just confidently jump in with her ultimate and kill most targets within that lockdown window. But between your ultimate and powered turrets and Zhonya's, that weakness is out of the window with Heimerdinger. Now let's talk about the build. You'll be starting off with Doran's Blade, then building into Leandre's Anguish. Pick up a Sorcerer's Shoes, an Oblivion Orb, and a Zhonya's Hourglass. After that, go for a Void Staff, then Rabidons, and lastly, finish things off by upgrading Orb to Morel and Omicon. Oh, and about your skill max order. Usually you want to max W on Heimerdinger for more poke, but against Camille, Q max works out a little bit better, for quicker pushing and more punishing lasers when you land a grenade. Having solid counters is definitely an important part of winning in solo queue. If you're playing off the back foot from the select, odds are already bad. But there's also so much more to that. You're gonna need really solid fundamentals if you're actually trying to climb. Whether you're new to the game or you have years of bad habits, it can be hard to find the direction on your own. But don't worry, that's where we come in. Get another pair of eyes at ProGuides.com, as we have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like CoreJJ, Aphromoo, and X Smithy to help you really understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized one-on-one -on -one experience, our top tier coaches are available 24-7 to help you anytime that you want it. Whichever option you choose, stop spinning your wheels on your own and get on that fast track for higher ELO today. Now let's get back on topic, shall we? The other top laner that we have for you is Kled into Maokai. Maokai's primary strengths are his ability to sustain in trades with his passive and being able to disengage fights that he doesn't want to take with his Q's knockback. But as Kled, you have two direct answers to both of those. Kled's Q's applies Grievous Wounds if you can get the second part off of it, and it's not just your normal 40% healing reduction. It's the amped up 60% cut to healing that usually comes with a fully upgraded item, so you can massively cut the healing that normally puts Maokai on top of trades. Now, for Maokai's ability to disengage from bad fights, against a champion like Camille or Fiora, who just have a single ability to gap close, Maokai's Q does the job, preventing them from ever taking a fight on their terms. But Kled isn't so easily shut down. He's more persistent than my ex. On top of the aforementioned Grievous Wounds, Kled's Bear Trap on the rope has the ability to pull Maokai back in, which basically negates his Q's knockback. Then there's Kled's E, which lets you dash in once, and then a second time if you land it the first time. Basically, there's just too much for Maokai to deal with, so you overwhelm him with the sticking power. With super high damage trades, when you fight around your W's cooldown, you can completely overpower Maokai by just bullying him. Now for the build, you'll be starting off with the Doran's Blade, then build into Gore Drinker, next Merc Treads, and then an Executioner's Calling for a more uptime on Grievous, and then a Black Cleaver. After that, go for either Titanic Hydra or Ravenous Hydra. Your last two item slots are optional, and should vary game to game based on your needs. Some options are upgrading Executioner's to Kempunk Chainsword, Death's Dance, Stone Plate, Sterax, and GA. Taking things into the jungle, our first counter is Vi into Kha'Zix. Vi is usually a bit of a slow roller in the jungle, so her biggest weakness is an opponent snowballing the game super hard in the first few levels, before she even comes online. But Kha'Zix follows a similar pace to her. He isn't really that great at ganking, so unless he has super high kill pressure lanes, he isn't going to be doing much in the opening stages of the game either. Once you have your ultimate, you will be able to gank with basically a 100% success rate as long as you're targeting the right lanes, while Kha'Zix's impact on the lanes remain pretty mediocre. In terms of direct combat with Kha'Zix, you're able to shut him down for the most part. Pre-6, you beat him in 1v1 fights. Once both of you have your ultimates, things aren't always so easy. It's a pretty close fight, and if you went Q Evolve, you'll likely lose. In skirmishes and team fights, you render him completely useless. What makes Ka so strong compared to the other assassins is his ability to stay in the fight. Most assassins' playstyles are to go in, burst down a target, and then get out. 
But with Kha'Zix and his multiple stealths from Duskblade and his ultimate, he's able to go in and then stealth around the fight, and he's also able to dish out a lot more damage. But with Vi's ultimate, you reveal him in his stealth and lock him down for your team to beat the tar out of him. Just squash that bug. Now, let's get on to the item build. Go Ember Knife for your starter item, then build into Divine Sunderer for your Mythic. As for boots, you'll want plated steel caps, then build into Serex Gage and Death's Dance. Your last two items are situational, but the general go-tos are Thornmail and Guardian Angel. If the enemy team has a heavy magic damage threat or two, then Wit's End is always a good choice. Our second counter in the jungle is Kindred into Fiddlesticks. I do want to note that Fiddle is one of the hardest champions to deal with in the jungle. He has insane team fighting potential, even when you're behind, so you really have to know what you're doing if you want to shut him down. In fact, this matchup is only really statistically Kindred favored in Diamond Plus. This means that it's a real skill matchup, where you actually have to be the better player, as opposed to this just being an X champ definitely beats Y champ situation. If you're tired of losing because you're lost as to what to do in your games, just remember, our coaches can help. Anyway, if you really want to punish Fiddle in this matchup, you'll have to be a little bit aggressive, playing for your marks as much as you can. Against somebody like Shinzao or Rek'Sai, invading blindly is usually a bad idea. If you go for a mark and they know it, they can easily catch you out and kill you in the early game. But Fiddle 6 lacks that ability. He's more of a damage over time type of champion, so you're basically free to just walk away if he finds you. So feel free to constantly invade to try to take the camps that are marked. And also make sure that your lanes have cryo. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about your targeted marks on the enemy champs. The default target for most Kindred players is the enemy jungle. I get why they do it. Logically, the enemy jungle is the one person that you should, in theory, come across the most on the map. Also, if you mark a laner, they may just hang back and deny you from ever collecting your mark. But here's my answer to that. One, if you find Fiddle, you're not really likely going to be able to kill him, especially if you're the one that's invading. Fiddle may not have a lot of proactive kill pressure, but when you take the time to fight him when he has a camp to heal off of, he'll come out on top just about every single time. As for the most part, most people don't really play any differently when they're marked by Kindred. Even a diamond and enemy top laner that gets marked at level 1 is just likely to push it off if they think they can bully their lane opponent. So if you're playing in an elo lower than that, don't expect your opponent to have the right response. So TLDR. Now this matchup, it's not going to be easy if you're going to be using Kindred as a direct counter to Fiddle. You just have to be better. You know, I guess that's kind of a cop-out answer. If you want to counter this champion, just be better. <laughs> Instead, you're going to have to use his lack of early game threat to build up your own lead. And once you have it, you'll use it to punish him as you wish. Especially since your ultimate can counter his. Now, let's look at his build. You'll be starting off with an Ember Knife, then build into Kraken Slayer, Berserker's Creep, and then the Collector. If you feel the need, you can go ahead and pick up an early Executioner's Calling somewhere in there. After that 3 item core is done, you'll build into Infinity Edge and Lord Dominic's Regards, with the order depending on how tanky the enemy team is. Your last item can either be a Bloodthirster, Mercurial Scimitar, or Mortal Reminder. Now, for the mid lane, our first matchup is Lux into Talon. For a long time, Lux was considered the mage that Enchanter mains played when they got mid. She's basically just a support, right? Well, with most other mages just shoved out of the meta, Lux is one of the few standard mages that remains a viable pick in the mid lane. And especially against Talon, she's one of the only picks in the game across all classes that can not only just survive the lane, but consistently do well in the matchup. And trust me, as a Talon main myself, I know, it's kind of cringe, I get it. I hate nothing more than a Lux player. Talon's strength as a laner comes from his overwhelming trading power. If he gets onto you, he can do a ridiculous amount of damage, so much so that it's pretty common to see Talon get first blood at level 2. There are basically no meta mid laners that can outdo him in a toe to toe fight. But for Lux, you don't really have to go toe to toe. Her Q is a perfect tool to negate him. Talon's Q is a gap closer, but it's short range, and it's very telegraphed. He doesn't have any side to side mobility to dodge your snare, so it's easy to stop him right in his tracks. This leaves him unable to really go in on you, and forces him to put up with being harassed by your e-spam every time that he moves up to farm. The last major point in this matchup is that you're able to hit Talon with your full combo from way outside of his effective range. Land a Q and you can follow that up with an E and an R and do a huge chunk and even one-shot him completely, depending on how fed you are. All of this without even being near him. Now let's look at the build. Start off with the Doran's Blade and then pick up an early Dark Seal. Then build towards your Ludens. For boots, always go Sorcerers. I'll never understand why people go Lucidity Boots on a champion meant to one-shot people with their combo. After that, upgrade Seal to Magi's, then Horizon Focus, Void Staff, and Rabidon's Death Cap. If you feel like you need the safety of Zhonya's, then you can replace Magi's with it. Our other mid lane matchup to take a look at is Kennen into Katarina. Katarina is a more than capable laner, being able to go for a level 2 or 3 all lins with just about as much success as Talon. But Kennen is the king of bullying melee champions. His range auto attacks means that you can consistently poke down Cat, and if she ever tries to go in, you can instantly stun her and zip back into your tower. 
With complete dominance in trading, Katarina can't just really contest the wave and look for roams either. If she moves up on you, you just auto her to death. The result is Katarina sitting back, letting you do what you want to do with the wave, and you have the priority to help your jungler and the other laners first. Post 6, Katarina gets a pretty big spike in kill pressure, but again, you just completely shut her down. The second that she tries to jump in, you answer with your ultimate and full combo, which can pretty much delete her. Usually Katarina is okay with playing a slower early game since she has incredible team fight damage, but your ultimate completely shuts her down there too. Just like in lane, the second that she jumps in, you let it rip and prevent her from ever getting her ultimate off more than half a second. Now let's look at the item build. Start off with the Doran's Blade and then build into Rocket Belt, Sorcerer's Shoes, and then Zanya's Hourglass. Then go for Void Seth and Rabidons, with her last slot either being a Morello or a Banshee's Veil. We do our best to provide reliable counters to the most OB champions in the meta in these videos, but what about the champions that aren't so popular? Champions like Yorick and Alawi, for example. They are pretty rare to see, but when I do see them, I feel like the top laners never know what to do. And that brings us to today's question of the day. What champion do you struggle to deal with? Let us know the champions that we don't touch on, but you wish that we did, down in the comments below. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back on the topic. Moving on down to the bottom lane, our first pick is Ash as a counter to Vayne. Ash is a pretty simple champion, so you don't really need to be a genius to figure out what makes this counter work, nor have any crazy mechanics to pull it off. In lane, you simply just outtrade Vayne with your range advantage, punishing every attempt that she makes at CSing with an auto or two. In the first few levels, W has a pretty long cooldown, but as you get into the later stages of the game, the lower cooldown means that you can use it to constantly shove in the wave and poke Vayne at the same time. Then she's trapped under tower, and you can poke, poke, poke away. Vayne can usually go for an all-in against most lane opponents at 6 with their ultimate, but as Ash, if Vayne ultimates and tumbles forward, it's pretty much impossible for you to miss your ultimate. Even if the sun has a low duration and a close range, it should do enough to either disengage the fight or give your support a chance to go in on Vayne and turn the fight in your favor. While Vayne does have a ridiculous amount of damage output, Ash is no slouch either. And between your superior range and your sun from your ultimate, oftentimes you can go ahead and kill Vayne before she even gets a chance to bring you down. Now, let's look at the build. You'll start off with the Doran's Blade and then rush Berserker Scream. Shield Bow is the go-to on Ash lately, but to match Vayne's DPS, you'll want Kraken Slayer. After that, go for Phantom Dancer, or against melee heavy teams, you can opt out for Arunin's Hurricane. Then go for an Infinity Edge, Lord Dominic's Regards, and then a Bloodthirster. Our other bot lane matchup is Seraphine as an answer to Trisana. This isn't a very hard counter where you win by directly challenging your opponent. In fact, there aren't really many champions that can hope to do that against Trisana. Aside from Draven, she just massively outdamages just about every other bot laner in head-to-head -head fights. So, you'll be using Seraphine to neutralize the laning phase rather than just trying to overpower it. Her Q and E both give strong pushing power and poke, so you can clear waves while trading from a safe distance. If Tristana ever tries to go in, E's slow and potential brute allows you to put some distance between you and Tristana, while W allows you to negate some of her damage in the trade. Post 6, Tristana jumping in means that she's going to be a completely open target for your ultimate. Seraphine may be a support type champ, but her early game base damage is pretty good, and regardless of her scary burst damage, Tristana is still a squishy marksman. Your full combo would do a huge chunk of damage to her, and with all the CC that you have from locking her down, your support should be easily able to follow up and help bring her down. Outside of the laning phase, you're not really going to ever fight Trisana as an individual. Your goal is just to be more useful than her in team fights. Being that Seraphine is one of the best scaling 5v5 champions in the game, it's not too hard. Just always use your Echo W when it's available, and hold your ultimate until the enemy team overcommits to a fight so you can be guaranteed to hit it on as many targets as possible. As for the builds, there are two options. The first is more damage heavy carry centric build. For that, you'll be starting off with Doran's Ring, pick up an early Dark Seal, and then build into Ludens, Sorcerer's Shoes, and Magi's. After that, go for Cosmic Drive, Rabidons, and Void Staff. If you want the more utility heavy build, start Doran's Ring, pick up an early tier, and then build into Leandri's, Lucidity Boots, and Archangel's Staff. Then pick up a Chemtech Putrefire, either Arden Sensor or Staff of Flowing Water, and then Rabidons. Now for our supports, the first counter that we have is Zyra and Lulu. While Lulu excels at buffing up and enabling hyper carries and shutting down divers with polymorph and doing literally everything in the game, her one glaring weakness is super high range champions. And that's exactly why Zyra does so well into her. In lane, you provide more pushing power than Lulu, and you're able to poke her from way outside of her effective range thanks to your thorn spitters. The game plan is pretty simple, spam Q on your seeds and then win trades. If Lulu tries to move up and then attempt to hit you back, root her with your E and then win the trade even harder. Once you push the enemy under their tower, let the ADC chip away at the turret as you keep up the harass. Post 6, hitting a root is basically a guaranteed kill, even through Lulu's ultimate. Outside of the laning phase, things get even better for you. Lulu's shield can prevent a bit of damage, but it's best at mitigating big bursts, not constant poke. And with the damage over the time effects with Leander's and Demonic Embrace, you'll start melting the enemy team. 
The only option Lulu and her team have is to force and engage, but between your E and your ultimate and the resulting empowered plants, that's not exactly a winning strategy. Now, let's look at the build. Start off with the Spell Thief's Edge and the build into Sorcerer's Shoes and then Leandri's. After that, pick up a Demonic Embrace, Void Staff, and a Ward Stone. If the game goes on late, you can save up the money and then you can sell Ward Stone for Rabidons. Just remember, that means no more control wards. And wards are pretty damn important. Finishing off our list, we have Blitzcrank as an answer to Thresh. Just like with Zyra against Lulu, this is about bypassing everything that makes his champion OP as a support. In lane, Thresh has two modes. He can go and be more aggressive, walking up for a hook or a flay on a target, or he can just be completely passive, playing to peel engage attempts with his flay and lantern in his ADC to safety. But as Blitz, your hook is enough to throw a wrench into his gears. If Thresh walks up past his own minions and goes on your carry, you can just hook him all the way back. If he's playing a more passive style, same thing. You're able to hook him or his carry from range, rendering his flay useless as an engaged tool. The follow-up knockup from your E allows your ADC to get a good amount of damage in on the hook target, and if timed well, it can even stop the target from being lanterned away. Post 6, you do have enough bursts that every hook should result in a kill. Outside of the lane, all the buff continues to apply. Whether Thresh is frontlining or playing back for the lantern, your hook range is too high for all of his disruptions to mean anything. The best that he can do is to hook your carry, but it's not like his chances of survival are any better. Now, let's take a look at the items that you should be building. Start off with a Relic Shield, then rush Moby Boots, and then after that, build into Solari and Zeke's Convergence. Your next item is optional. You can go Knight's Vow as the standard, cookie cutter option, but I personally prefer to either go Abyssal Mask to double down on Zeke's damage amp against hook targets, or a Frozen Heart against AD heavy teams. After you made that choice, your last item will be a Ward Stone. Anyway, that concludes our latest episode of Counterpicks. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, be sure to sub so you never miss out on our meta guides, and you're always going to be in the loop on what the best picks are. Remember, let us know what champion that you'd like to know how to counter that we didn't really talk about today in the comments down below. And if you guys see a champion down there that you know how to counter, go ahead and leave a comment as well. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description below, where we can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.